Welcome back to Mojo Group, Mike here. Today we're going to talk about five different lessons that every new pilot must learn. But here's the caveat. It's going to scare the crap out of you. Learning how to fly is a journey and one that you must take with diligence and the readiness to learn. During your flight training, your instructor is going to take you through several different procedures that will prepare you to be a better pilot. Some will be fun, but some will make you think twice about what exactly you're doing. The first lesson that is guaranteed to scare you is a power off stall. As a student pilot, you're going to learn this. It's part of your ACS. So whenever your instructor tells you that you're going to learn power off stall, you need to be mentally prepared. This is how power off stall is simulated. First, your instructor will tell you to pull the power all the way back. This is why you're flying. And then they tell you to pitch the nose of the airplane up. But once you pitch the nose up, and they tell you to keep pulling back and keep pulling back until the airplane stops flying. This is a very scary thing when you're a couple of thousand feet in the air and all of a sudden the airplane stops flying. Two things typically happens. You feel the airplane come into a halt, but in many aircraft, you start feeling some vibration. And in some cases, you might even drop a wing and that's a very scary feeling. I remember the first time we practiced power off stall, I told myself, I don't want to do that again. It's a scary feeling because your body is not used to the sensation like that. But once you do it over and over and over again, you get used to it and it becomes just a normal thing. Now, what's the lesson here? The reason why you practice power off stall is so that you can be prepared in a real life situation if something were to happen. When an airplane stalls, it means the airplane stops flying. And generally speaking, a power off stall would happen when you're coming into land because this is when your airplane is flying at its lowest speed. And if a stall were to happen during landing, that's a bad recipe for disaster. And this is why your instructor prepares you to one, stay on top of the airplane and make sure you don't get yourself in that situation to begin with. But also if a stall were to happen, you know how to recover. And that's simply just pitching the nose down. Now in a scenario where you're coming into land, you're already low to the ground. So you have very little room to be able to correct that mistake. So it's best to never let the airplane be in that scenario to begin with. Number two, power on stalls. Shortly after you learn a power off stall, chances are you also learn about a power on stall. The important lesson to learn here is the fact that an airplane can stall at any speed. You don't have to be moving slow for the airplane to stall. You can stall whether you're moving fast or slow. To teach you a power on stall, your instructor will tell you to pull the power all the way up and then once again, pitch the nose of the aircraft up. Now, a different sensation is gonna go through your body this time because you're hearing the engine screaming and you're at max power, but once you hold that nose up long enough, the airplane will stall. And the thing that's most scary about a power on stall is because you need to have your legs on the right rudder. There's a higher chance that you will drop a wing when you're practicing a power on stall. And that's a scarier feeling. It's one thing for the nose of the airplane to drop, but when you drop a wing, it almost feels like you're about to go into a spin. And that's very scary. And several lessons that you're being taught here is one, when you're flying an airplane, you wanna make sure that your wings are balanced, especially during takeoff, which is what a power on stall procedure is really about. Just like when you're coming into land, you're also more vulnerable to a stall when you're taking off. This is when you're using your maximum power. And if you don't have the airplane in the right altitude or the right pitch, you may end up stalling it. This is why your instructor teaches you, again, to stay on top of the airplane and make sure you're pitching the nose up to the right angle during takeoff. Also, at any point in your flight, you wanna make sure that your wings are balanced. Should in case a stall happens, even in high altitude, the best way to correct a stall is just to pitch the nose down. But God forbid, if you were to spin the airplane, that's a totally different procedure you need to learn. Nevertheless, it's a very scary feeling when you try it for the first time. Number three, 
Unusual attitudes. Unusual attitude is a procedure that you learn in an emergency situation. Generally, your instructor will have you wearing a hood over your eyes. That way, you can't see outside. You can only see what's in the cockpit, which is your instrument. And so you're flying along and your instructor tells you, my airplane. And they tell you to just focus on your instrument. And what your instructor will do is put the airplane in a very, very bad position. They can pitch the nose up, they can pitch the nose all the way down, they can turn you all the way to the left or all the way to the right. Basically, they move that airplane in a very bad attitude and then they leave the airplane up to you to correct the situation. Now, when you're under a hood, you can't see outside, you can't reference anything, you're only looking at your instrument, but you can feel all the sensation going on when the plane is put in a bad attitude and you're just getting ready to correct whatever the hell your instructor just did. It can be really scary at first, but once you get used to trusting your instrument, you should be able to correct these situations. And the reason why you practice unusual attitudes is because as a private pilot or a sport pilot, if one day you were just flying along and you find yourself fly into the clouds or fly into a situation where your view outside is completely gone, the first lesson is to trust your instrument. When you can't see outside, your instrument is the only reference that you have to navigate that airplane. So that is the most important lesson here is to trust your instrument. Number four is turbulence. See, generally speaking, where most people get their first experience in an airplane is in a big jumbo jet. But when you're flying a very small airplane, you feel everything. In a very small airplane that you're the controller, you're the pilot in command, when you feel turbulence, it might scare you the first time. And it really just depends on where you're flying. When you're flying around mountains or you're flying on a very hot day, the air can be rough. And as pilot in command, you need to learn how to keep the airplane balanced. So several lessons you learn here is one, stay on top of the airplane, two, keep your airplane balanced, and three, know your maneuver and speed. This is the perfect scenario where you practice that. Any airplane you learn how to fly will have what's called a maneuver and speed. And a maneuver and speed is the maximum speed which you must fly the airplane in rough air. So let's assume that you're just cruising along and all of a sudden you start to feel bumps and maybe the bumps get worse. Your brain should tell you, I'm in the rough situation here and the next thing you need to do is to power back. You need to reduce the power of that airplane within the envelope of the maneuver and speed. Number five, your solo flight. This is what every student pilot waits for. This is what every student pilot dreams of, just to fly on your own. Before you solo, you must have gone through several different procedures and found sufficient enough to be able to pilot the airplane on your own. So one day you show up for training and your instructor tells you, I need you to give me three landings and three takeoffs in the pattern. This is the day you've been waiting for. But as exciting as you may be, I promise you, you're also going to be very nervous. Just allow yourself to breathe and trust that you know how to fly the airplane. But several things are going to happen during your solo flight. The very first thing that you notice when you power on and you take off is how fast the airplane takes off compared to when you have your instructor in the airplane. That's the first sensation that you feel. Also, the controls might feel lighter on you. And sometimes because your brain is so used to having the control feel a certain way or the airplane taking off at a certain distance, you may need to play some catch up there. But for the most part, you're safe and you know how to fly the airplane. And this is all for today's video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please go ahead and give a thumbs up. Also, if this is your first time on the channel, make sure you subscribe with the notification bell on. And a great way to support Mojo Grip is by becoming an MVP or by becoming a subscriber on Patreon. Again, thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Mike and I will catch you on the next video.
was that? 